message from Arthur. I gotta call Buster. Hey, Arthur. Hey, Buster. Did you see that video? Yeah, I just watched it. It was awful. I can't believe someone would be hurt like that just because they're black. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. First and foremost, I got to get this out of the way just so we're all clear. I'm not a racist. I don't hate black people. And my eyes were all just human beings. And yes, black lives do matter, just like all of our lives matter. Frankly, I don't think we needed to be told that. With all that being said, I want to lay out some undeniable facts about Black Lives Matter, the organization. They're far left Marxists and their ultimate goals include the destruction of the nuclear family. They've incited violence and murder going back 10 years now. Their leaders make demands and promise violence if those demands aren't met. And they've even been let off the hook on felony assault charges against police out of fear of violence that'll happen in response. This is the very definition of terrorism, folks. Above all, they promote broad generalizations and judgments of white people in this country while also attributing traits and abilities, again, based on skin color. And again, this is the very definition of racism. To summarize, Black Lives Matter, the organization, not the slogan, is very bad. And not just for all the reasons I listed, but because they also don't deal in reality. So it really shouldn't surprise anybody that now PBS, the public broadcasting system, is using beloved children's cartoons to push racist, far left Marxist propaganda under the guise of educational videos. Now we're gonna get right into dissecting this Marxist garbage, but first give me just a moment moment to tell you about this special offer for my subscribers from this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. You likely already know what collagen is. Collagen makes your skin healthy and gives you a youthful look. It strengthens nails, hair, teeth, and gut health maintains muscle, improves joints, and so much more. Get yourself a bag of Ageless Multi Collagen. I highly recommend it. As an added bonus, if you order today, they'll give you free shipping, free VIP live health and fitness coaching for life, and a free e-report on the 14 foods for amazing skin. If you order today, you can save up to 51% off Ageless Multi Collagen. And rest assured knowing this company offers a 60 day money back guarantee, even on empty bags. Go to www.healthwithdronetech.com and order today. Or click the link in the description or pinned comment. All right, we're back, folks. Let's take a look at this video put out yesterday by PBS called Arthur on Racism. Talk, listen, and act. And now, a message from Arthur. I gotta call Buster. Hey, Arthur. Hey, Buster. Did you see that video? Yeah, I just watched it. It was awful. I can't believe someone would be hurt like that just because they're black. Racism is so unfair. No one should ever judge someone by the color of their skin. <laughs> All right, so we're already in the first 20 seconds or so of this video, and there's a lot that I got to comment on. So first of all, why the hell are they telling a bunch of children about a video that depicts somebody being killed, a human being being killed on video? Uh, that's probably the last thing I want my kids to see. I mean, I saw that video and I've seen a lot of bad stuff on the internet, but that video was hard for me to watch. And yet they're promoting that kids go and watch this. Another problem is they're claiming without evidence that this man was killed for the color of his skin. They're blaming racism right off the bat. Uh, you know, we do have video of him being killed by police. That's true. But there's also body cam footage out there from the police. And that video shows that Floyd was resisting and fighting police. Look, he was being lawfully detained. If he hadn't have fought police, that probably wouldn't have happened. Now, I'm not excusing what happened, but to just come out and say that it was racism, despite the fact that we can see lots of other factors at play here, uh, is just wrong. And beyond that, we got his toxicology report that showed that not only did he have coronavirus, but he was loaded with fentanyl and methamphetamines in his system. So these are all factors that played a part in what happened to Floyd. But in this kid's video, they're just ignoring all that and saying he was killed because he's black. Which brings me to my next problem. At the end there, he says something that's true, that nobody should be based on the color of their skin. 
But that's what this is all about, really. It's all about judging this white policeman and his actions as racist because the victim was black and the perpetrator, the policeman, was white. Not to mention that all the Marxist garbage they're regurgitating here is all based on broadly judging and generalizing white people. How could it happen here, in Elwood City, right outside the Sugar Bowl? Buster, it happens everywhere. I was talking to Mrs. McGrady the other day. She said there's a really long history of black people not being treated fairly in this country. Okay, we're gonna start with the lie they just told there that this is a widespread thing that happens, quote, everywhere. I'm confused. Are these not animal people? I've never once seen a black person in this show. And here's another problem. They claim that this happens everywhere. That's simply not true. Look, there are 250 million people in this country. 40 million of those are black, 235 million of them are white. There are nearly 700 million police who have millions of interactions in this country every single day. If this were some widespread issue that were happening everywhere, you would see way more examples of it. Instead, what you see is a media that cherry picks and is very selective of what video they'll put out. Look, the data is quite clear. There are way more cops killed in this country than white or black people. And while nine black people were killed by police last year, it is disproportional. It's a low number, but it is disproportional to their population size. But the problem is they're also overrepresented in violent crime and murder, which has obvious implications on their interactions with police. This officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male is to be killed by a police officer. All of these factors are just ignored in place of the baseless claim that George Floyd was killed because he's black. The fact is there are way more white people that are killed than black people. And they'll always point to the disproportionate amount of black people that are killed while ignoring the crime and murder rates. But they just completely ignore that so many whites are killed. If this was all about racism, why are so many white people killed? And it is true that in America, there's a history of mistreating black people, but we have have made huge strides in the last 50 years. Just because that's true, that black people have been mistreated historically, doesn't mean that it is true now. And it definitely doesn't mean that it's true that when a cop shoots a black person, that it was all based on racism. There's plenty of other factors to take into consideration, but they don't do that because why? It doesn't advance their political agenda. It's as simple as that. It just really seems like they're teaching kids to not think critically. It's almost like they're teaching them thinking critically is a bad thing. It has to stop. We have to do something. Yeah. But what can we do? Hello, boys. I'm so glad you reached out to me. Yes, I saw the video too. And let me tell you, it made my blood boil. Me too! It also made me scared. I mean, this happened in our neighborhood. It is scary, Buster. Hmm, okay. So, first of all, why would it why would the kids be scared? I mean, George Floyd, again, they're erasing that context that George Floyd, you know, had drugs in the system and was fighting police when he was being lawfully detained. They, they leave that out of there. And of course the kids are going to be scared because you're basically telling them that the cops are out there just hunting people and killing people you know, every single day, which is just not happening. Police brutality is an issue that needs addressing, but it's an issue for everybody, regardless of skin color. And it should make everybody question why the media is trying to make this a racial issue when the stats and the data, again, are very clear. One of the reasons it's making her blood boil is because she's being fed a very selective, propagandized version of what's actually going on. For example, everybody knows about the George Floyd video, but not so much when it comes to the white guy who was killed by police in the exact same way. Just yesterday, a white guy was killed in his home while playing PlayStation in the middle of the night when cops showed up pounding on his door. He opens up the door with his weapon thinking it's, you know, who's at my door in the middle of the night and the cops unload on him, killing him. Is that a major news story? Is anybody rioting and looting over that story? Is anybody outraged? No, not at all. Why? Because the media hasn't made it an issue. But you should know that a lot of grown-ups are fighting racism and working hard to keep us all safe. <laughs> really? They're working hard to keep us all safe by trying to abolish or defund police? That's not going to make people more safe. That's going to lead to more black deaths. Because you know what? All the, this stuff isn't widespread. It's happening in very select areas. It's happening mostly in areas where there's high amounts of gun violence and gang violence and black-on-black -black murder. 
That's the reason that there's so many police there and that's why these acts usually happen. Telling children that they have some reason to be scared of police is wrong because they don't. It's pretty simple. Don't break the law and if you are being detained by police, comply and go along with it. If it's wrong, you can sue them later in court. What you shouldn't do is fight the police because when you fight the police, it usually ends up like this. Why does this keep happening, Mrs. McGrady? Well, racism is like a disease. If you don't treat it, it's just gonna get worse. Wait. What? Yeah, wait, what? It's like a disease now, huh? Racism is like a disease. See, I would say that racism is something that all human beings can potentially uh, have. It's a flaw that any of us can have because it's really a byproduct of evolution, right? It's something that's kind of ingrained in, in everybody's DNA to some extent. Uh, but, I, I, you know, most people, I think, uh, work through it. It's not something that controls them. But potentially, all people uh, can can show this flaw. But to say it's like a disease, oh, that's interesting because you have to cure a disease. So what are what are they saying exactly? That there there's people out there that are infected that have to be treated by them? This is just reminding me more and more of the Salem witch trials. They accuse you of having something. You can deny it, but now they're even calling it a disease. So it's something that you can claim you don't have, but they can just say that you do and say that you require treatment. The problem here is that this ideology, the, uh, this anti-racist ideology that has Marxist roots, in this ideology, it's white people that are the problem. Only white people are racist, and it's impossible to be racist to white people. Like, they have all their bases covered. If racism is a disease, can I get it? Buster, don't worry. This isn't about you. Actually, it is. It's about all of us. It's not enough to just say, I'm not racist. It's not my problem. We have to actively fight against racism. As my friend John Lewis once said, if you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. <laughs> Okay, so here, this is basically uh, white silence is violence and this kind of thing. It's not enough just to claim you're not a racist. You've got to actively go out there and, and, and uh, point out other racists and go after people who you see as racist. I mean, again, I, I made the Salem Witch Trials analogy here. This is a lot like that because during the Salem Witch Trials, the best thing that you could have done, uh, you know, if you were accused of being a witch was admit to it and then accuse others of being a witch. That, you know, that might set you free, although probably not. But what did other people do? To inoculate themselves from the charge, they just went out and accused others of being witches. So that's essentially what they're teaching these kids here. You've been accused of a crime you did not commit. It's impossible to prove your innocence. If you insist that you're innocent anyway, you'll likely be found guilty and executed. But if you confess, apologize, and implicate others for good measure, you'll go free. Do you give a false confession or risk a public hanging? Look, I'm against racism, and if you can point me to actual examples of racism, I'll stand with you. But in this video, they're pushing this idea that if you see something that you consider unjust or not fair, then you should act and accuse, I guess, these people of being racist. And this is also setting up a dynamic to where if you don't agree with the way that they see things, well, then you must be on the side of racism. Well, one of the most important things is what you're doing right now. Eating carrot sticks? <laughs> I mean, talking about it. Talk about racism with your friends, your <laughs> parents, your teachers. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We all have a lot to learn about this issue. And there you got. Um, so they always claim they want to have a conversation. Go out and talk about racism. Yeah, right. They what they want to do, and and, and you see there she then prefaces it saying, "Oh, we all have a lot to learn." What she really means is we all have a lot to be indoctrinated about by this far left Marxist movement. Look, we can talk about racism. I'm talking about it right now. But do you think that any of these people would have any of what I'm saying in their discussion? Of course not. They would instantly label me a racist for bringing up crime stats and data. All this did was implant a bunch of baseless beliefs that are conflicting with all the available data out there. 
and basically are programming kids to accept that as the truth and then go out and talk about it go out and push it and being young skulls full of mush they're gonna have a lot to be indoctrinated with on this topic so be ready for that and then when you are indoctrinated you can go home and try to force your parents into believing what you believe I mean, this is like classic Red Revolution stuff where they indoctrinate the kids to turn on their own parents. And make no mistake, they are setting up this situation where you're not allowed to criticize or question this movement. And you see that now with this uh, Politico article. They're trying to set up this dynamic where you're not allowed to oppose them. If you question or scrutinize Black Lives Matter, well, that just means you're a racist. They clearly don't like having real discussions on the facts and the data because a lot of it is inconvenient to their narrative. And so they use these tactics. They close down comment sections. They censor the big tech giant platforms. They cherry pick the videos that they're going to put out in the media to give a completely unrealistic view of what's going on. And this is what we're facing right now. I don't know, folks. I'm not looking forward to the school year starting because I know I'm going to probably have to take a more active role and fight against these pushes to include this stuff in the curriculum because I know it's coming. That's all I have for today, folks. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on any of the platforms listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.